So, we'll get started with the uh, 23rd lecture of the course. And uh, what we saw in the uh, last two lectures is some uh, problems on stability of a system. Okay. The first problem that we discussed uh, on stability was that of uh, a well mixed system. So, there was no spatial gradients and you only had uh, time dependency. Okay. So, time dependency has to be retained because you are talking about how things behave as you progress in time. So, the uh, governing equations of the system were a couple of ordinary differential equations which are actually linked to each other. So, they were coupled ordinary differential equations. Then uh, we did the uh, problem on the uh, reaction differential uh, diffusion system and the reaction diffusion system it was a partial differential equation. So, that, that was the level of complexity we added from an ODE we went to a partial differential equation. But then uh, we simplified things a little bit by saying that we we'll consider only one variable and it is only concentration okay, just to illustrate the ideas. So, today now what we will do is we will actually look at a fluid flow problem and in the fluid flow problem it is going to have a uh, more than one variable, the different velocity components okay, uh, and the pressure. There is also going to be temperature which is the energy coming going to come from the energy balance. But then we will again keep life a little bit simple by considering only a single phase. So, we will looking only at one phase and uh, then after we finish this problem then we will get to uh, doing actually multi phase flow problems where we have to worry about tracking the interface. Okay. So, that is just to tell you the gradual uh, evolution in the uh, complexity of the problems that we are trying to solve. So, today what we are going to look at is this problem of natural convection and uh, this is also called the rayleigh Bernard problem. problem after uh, the scientists who actually analyzed this uh, particular system and we are going to follow that procedure and try to get some insight into this problem of natural convection. Okay. And uh, we are looking at single phase, single liquid or single phase as far as the liquid is concerned, okay. single phase, but now the system will be governed by coupled partial differential equations. Okay. So, because there is only one liquid we do not worry about things like and of course, this is going to be bounded between solids. We do not worry about things like the uh, kinematic boundary condition, the normal stress boundary condition of the interface. We do not have to worry about interface deformation. After this we will solve problems where we have to worry about those also we will include those effects in the model. Okay. So, now uh, what is this problem of natural convection? We will uh, keep things simple like we always do. Look at two flat plates. This is the y direction and this is the x direction and this is the z direction. Okay. Now, we uh, have uh, in this coordinate system two flat plates. One is at y equals 0 and the other is at y equals h. These flat plates are extending to infinity in the 
x direction and in the z direction okay so we have rectangular plates extending to infinity in the x and z directions the spacing between the plates is h. Now we want to talk about this problem of natural convection okay. So as opposed to so convection means you are going to have movement and uh, natural convection as you all know is going to be caused by density differences okay. So if you have a layer of liquid or a fluid at the bottom which is having a lower density than the layer at the top then it will have a tendency to rise up because it, the density is lower because of the buoyancy it has a tendency to go up and when it goes up the fluid which is on the top will have a tendency to come down which is heavier and so you can have motion you can have circulation set in okay. Normally the natural convection that we talk about is caused by density differences which are going to be induced by temperature gradients. So if there is a layer of fluid when there is a temperature gradient the hot fluid at the bottom uh, which is at a higher temperature will have a lower density and this guy has a tendency to rise up okay. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to solve this problem subject to a temperature gradient okay and I am going to call the temperature here T0 because corresponding to y equal to 0 and I am going to call the temperature here Th. So basically what I am saying is that there are two plates, the lower plate is at a temperature T0, the top plate is at a temperature Th okay and uh, so T0 and Th are the temperatures. of the two plates as the first thing and natural convection arises because of uh, density gradients. Okay, these density gradients can be induced by temperature gradients so you all know that uh, density is a function of temperature okay. And therefore, uh, we need to basically include the effect of uh, this density dependent C on temperature and uh, to be able to proceed, okay. Now, if you have a configuration of this kind, let us consider first the case where case 1. T0 is less than Th which means the lower plate is colder than the upper plate okay. So what does this mean? You have a less dense fluid at the top, a more dense fluid at the bottom okay. So that is a configuration where you will have stability always in the sense that there is nothing which is going to cause this liquid to go up okay, it is a stable configuration. So here the less dense fluid is on top of a more dense layer okay 
and this is the stable configuration and uh, we do not expect to see any convection. What about the reverse case? The reverse case is when T0 is greater than Th, that is the lower plate is hotter than the upper plate. Okay? So, when T0 is greater than Th, the less dense fluid is below the more dense fluid buoyancy uh, forces this fluid to rise up okay so uh, if you just look at the buoyancy effect the less dense fluid has a tendency to rise up. So, what is it that is going to prevent this motion? What is it that is going to prevent this less dense fluid from going up? Basically, the viscous force, viscosity is like a friction, it is going to prevent this liquid from going up. Okay? So, basically what I am saying is, um, viscous, viscosity acts as a friction and opposes this tendency. Tendency for the liquid to go up. I am just trying to tell you that there are two forces that you have to look at. One is the buoyancy force which is trying to push this guy up, the viscous force which is trying to prevent it from moving up. So, what does that mean? It means that when the temperature difference here T0 minus Th is small, sufficiently small, okay, the buoyancy force is going to be less okay, in comparison to the viscous force. Viscous force of course is uh, going to be decided by the viscosity times the uh, velocity gradient. Okay. So, that is uh, going to be dominating the buoyancy force, the viscous force will dominate the buoyancy force when T0 minus Th is sufficiently low. But what is going to happen as we keep increasing the temperature of the bottom plate, there is going to be a time which comes or there is going to be a value of this lower plate temperature which comes when the buoyancy force is going to dominate over the viscous force and then the liquid is going to start moving. Okay. So, Again, we have a situation where there is a critical parameter and this critical parameter experimentally you can think of as the temperature of the lower plate. For a value of this parameter, the lower plate temperature greater than a certain value, I expect that to be natural convection. If the temperature is lower than that critical value, there is going to be no natural convection because viscosity is basically going to prevent the motion. All I am trying to tell you is that just because you have a small temperature gradient you do not have to expect a natural convection to take place. Okay? It is not that any small delta t is going to give you convection. You need to have a significant amount of delta t and what we want to do is, we want to see if we can determine what this critical value of delta t is by posing this problem as a stability problem. Okay? And uh, that is basically what our strategy is. Our uh, I, I, objective is to identify this uh, delta t and get this. Yeah? It would, be, it would depend on the uh, delta t would depend upon a whole bunch of things and we are going to that is what the analysis will tell us. The analysis will tell us it will depend upon the properties of the fluid, it will depend upon the gap between the plates and what are these uh, different things on which it is going to depend upon the analysis is going to tell us. Yes, but it will depend upon the fluid, it will depend upon 
how strong the density variation is with temperature, okay. It will depend upon uh, the thermal conductivity of the fluid, it will depend upon many things, okay. So, here what I am saying is if T0 minus TH is sufficiently low, then F viscous is more than F buoyancy and the liquid is static. If T0 minus TH is greater than a critical value, F buoyancy will be greater than F viscous and we expect to see convection. We expect convection, okay. So, the question is how do you go about determining this critical temperature? or temperature difference and like he says it is going to depend upon the fluid properties, it is going to depend upon uh, uh, space etcetera. So, this uh, let me just call this delta T critical which is T0 minus TH or delta T is T0 minus TH, okay, uh, has a critical value above which we have convection, okay. So, what we want to do is uh, find out what this critical value is. So, we want to, to find delta T critical, okay. And uh, this is done by posing the problem as a stability problem. So, we want to uh, ask the question in the context of the stability framework that we were introduced earlier, okay. Uh, yeah, another way to look at this whole uh, thing is supposing there is a very small delta T, okay, then what it means is the mechanism of heat transfer that you are going to have is going to be that of only conduction, that is conduction alone is enough for you to transfer the heat from the lower plate to the upper plate. If the uh, delta T becomes high, then conduction alone is not enough for you to do the heat transfer. And so, in order to facilitate the heat transfer, the in addition to conduction, you have convection which is necessary for you to transfer the heat, okay. That is one way to look at it also, okay. So, that is, uh, so what I am saying is for low delta T, conduction alone can transfer the heat. For high delta T, conduction and convection are required for the heat transfer from the lower plate to the upper plate, 
okay now so clearly what we need to do is we need to write down the how do we go about solving this uh, problem of stability we need to write out the governing equations so what are the governing equations that are required one is the continuity equation and the momentum equations in the x and y direction or rather yeah in the x and y direction we're going to assume it is infinity in the z direction and uh, we also need the energy balance equation because we need to worry about how the temperature is changing okay we need to include the energy balance equation also so the governing equations are and why do i need uh, uh, both x and y direction because when the hot liquid here has a tendency to go up okay this guy the cold liquid from here is going to have a tendency to come down so you're going to get something like a um, circular vortex okay and i'm extending although i'm extending this to infinity what i expect to see is i'm expecting to see a periodically repeating pattern of these kind of cylindrical rolls so basically what this means that i have this kind of a situation all of the same size okay and this is extending to infinity in the z direction the point i'm trying to make here is the system is extending to infinity in both x and z direction to keep my life simple what i'm going to do is i'm going to exploit the fact that the thing is extending to infinity in the z direction and look for solutions which are independent of z okay so we are just saying that things are independent of z just to keep it mathematically tractable in the x direction also it is extending to infinity but i'm not going to use the argument that it is going to be spatially uniform in the x direction i'm going to look for a solution which is periodic in the x direction okay so i just want and the reason why i'm doing this is because of the temperature gradient i'm going to say that i what what do i expect physically i'm expecting that this guy goes up this hot fluid comes down and this is going to ha uh, occur at some kind of a regular periodic uh, spatially periodic interval okay and that's one of the things which we want to find out how does the system behave when you are delta t critical is exceeded okay when I, you say convection is going to take place but how exactly is the liquid going to move just like we saw yesterday in the reaction diffusion problem the velocity was zero but when it becomes unstable you have a, a solution which is like a, a parabolic thing with a maximum at the center okay so now beyond a delta t critical what exactly is going to be the pattern so i have already given you the answer that one possible pattern is this kind of a periodic cylindrical roll okay so this is called a cylindrical roll clearly because this is circular extends to infinity so it's a cylinder and that was a cylindrical roll okay so this is one possible pattern pattern and one of the things we really want to find out is things like what is the spacing etc etc yeah is it fine the actual case will be definitely different than this right um, the mathematical formulation no the actual case in in the sense that when you say okay the actual case is when you're doing an experiment when you're doing an experiment you would have walls at these two ends okay and then you need to actually have to worry about the boundary conditions so supposing you have a very long uh, length in the x direction okay if you forget the end effects where the boundary condition is going to prevail and if you focus somewhere in the center then this is one possible pattern that you can get okay now uh, as we go along i'll talk about there are other patterns also possible this is just for easy visualization you can have other patterns like hexagons etc possible when you consider three dimensional thing when you have variations in the x y and z direction but then uh, just to keep uh, math simple right now we are just looking at it this way but then experimentally and then as we go along i'll explain to you when what decides what pattern and all that okay so different different patterns are possible now i'm beginning to uh, read uh, shubham's mind now that's dangerous okay so let's write the uh, governing equations uh, equations are the continuity equation 
which is divergence of u equals 0, okay. And since I am neglecting things in the z direction, I do not uh, write the momentum equation in the z direction. I am just going to write the equation in the x and y direction, okay. Uh, momentum equation in the x and y directions. What is that? Uh, plus uh, this is in the x direction, right? So, this is x direction and this gravity is not in the x direction and then I have this. Gravity is uh, acting downwards, so it is not in the y direction. And so, just give me a minute. Yeah. Sir, so, uh, continuity equation is yeah. for incompressible fluid. Yeah. And here we have density difference. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you using Yeah. So the question is, uh, what I've written is wrong. And uh, this equation is valid only for an incompressible liquid when you say that the density is constant, it does not change with x, y time, okay. So, his objection is I should use the full fledged form of the continuity equation, which is there for a compressible uh, fluid, okay. And I think that is a very valid objection. In fact, I was expecting that objection. So, the density uh, variation has to be included clearly, okay. So, the equation of continuity is That is the uh, general equation, okay. And uh, so now the question is um, ideally, I have to use the density, uh, include the density variation like this, use this form of the equation of continuity. In fact, I need to go back to the momentum equation also and make some changes because I have actually pulled out uh, the density from my derivative term and I need to modify that term as well, okay. Um, so, what is it that I am doing here? So, now the important thing whenever you are trying to do an analysis is to develop a model which is as simple as possible, okay, but which can capture the essential physics of the process, okay. So, what you are saying is correct, I need to use this particular form of the equation of continuity, I have actually used uh, the fact that density is constant and I have actually simplified when I wrote the momentum equations uh, and stuff like that. But, so there has been an approximation which has been made, okay. So, idea whenever you are solving any problem is to keep the model as simple as possible so that you can basically solve it mathematically and try to get a some physical insight, okay. That is what we are trying to do here. If you want to get the most accurate solution and to the 8th decimal place or the ninth decimal place, then you need to sit here and you know put the density inside your uh, continuity equation and solve the full fledged model without making any assumptions, uh, any approximations. 
So, the question now is what is um, uh, the simplest thing we can do which will capture the physics, which will retain the physics and give us insight into the problem that we are studying. Okay. So, to clearly density is a function of temperature, temperature is changing with x and y because of the uh, density, uh, the temperature gradient. So, what we want to do is we want to keep the model simple and uh, so that I can possibly solve it analytically and get physical insight. Okay. And to answer this question, how does this critical de delta T depend upon uh, thermal diffusivity, viscosity, etc., etc.? Otherwise, what are you going to do? You are going to have a uh, bunch of equations, you will go to the computer, write a finite difference code and keep running simulations and say, oh, now it is uh, not convecting, now it is convecting and you will have no clue as to what is going on. Okay. So, we want to basically get out of that situation that where we are just going blindly to the computer and doing some uh, calculations. So, the approximation, we have made an approximation here like you have just pointed out and this approximation is called the business approximation. Okay. So, uh, let me just write down a few things. We want a mathematical model which is simple but can capture the essential and important physics. This is, this gives us physical insight into what is going on. Okay. Otherwise, if we do not simplify then you will have a bunch of computational results which we can't make head or tail out of. Okay. interpret computational results. You will have a whole bunch of results coming out of your calculations and then you say, ah, if I change my density, I got this, when I change this, I got that, but then at the end of the day, you will be lost. Okay? But then also, you should be careful that you do not simplify things too much, then nothing is happening. Okay? So, I mean, uh, that is the important thing, but do not simplify too much that uh, you do not get any convection no matter how much you are heating it. Okay? That is also you should be very uh, careful about, okay? but do not simplify too much. And that I think is the key thing, do not simplify too much to lose the physics, to lose the essential physics. Okay. So, that is the uh, game you have to do. So, what we uh, and what I have done now is actually and the way I have written these equations is we have done what is called the Buisonesk approximation. So, what is this Buisonesk approximation? The Buisonesk approximation is the thing where we are do, making this simplification. Okay. So, now the, we have to retain the density dependency on temperature, correct? Because if you do not have the, the density dependency on temperature, there is no way you are going to have any convection. So, this has to be included. Do you have want to include the density dependency on temperature wherever the density is occurring? which means I have to include it there, I have to include it maybe here and maybe modify this equation suitably. Okay? Or is it possible for me to include the density dependency only on uh, one term which is important, which is going to be crucial and 
treat in all the other terms as if density is being constant. Okay, because if it's a liquid, you really don't expect a very very significant change in the density. If it's a gas, yes, there will be significant changes in density as you change temperature. So, the one term in which you want to actually retain the density dependency on temperature. You guys want to take half a minute and identify which term you want to retain this thing in. The way I have written it, uh, density is occurring in here, here, there and in the equation of continuity, right. So, which term do you think we need to retain the uh, density dependency on temperature? In, in the gravitational uh, term, because that is the one which is going to give you the buoyancy force, okay. The rho g term is the one. So, if I have the density dependence on temperature retained in the rho g term and for all practical purposes everywhere else I am going to assume density is constant, okay. And that is basically the, uh, the approximation, this business approximation that I am talking about, which is basically telling you that everywhere else I am going to treat this as if it is a constant rho 0. But in rho g, because that has to be retained for me to get my, because eventually it is the uh, density uh, gradient in the direction of the gravity which is actually causing the uh, motion, okay, and that has to be retained. So basically what this means is, here we keep rho as a function of temperature only in the rho g term in the y equation, okay. This is necessary to get natural convection. At all other places, this we treat density as being equal to a constant which is equal to rho 0, okay. So, what I am going to do and that is the reason my equation of continuity is written that way, I have simplified it, okay. So, we use the divergence of u equal to 0 for an incompressible fluid. And I am going to quickly pull a fast one here, put a rho 0 here and a rho 0 there. So, just put the rho 0 here because at, at these places I do not want to uh, include my density dependency on temperature. But that term over there, rho g term, I keep rho as a function of temperature, okay. So, only in the rho g term, I retain the temperature dependency. And uh, we are going to keep life simple, which is assume a very linear relationship for uh, the uh, temperature dependency on temp uh, density dependency on temperature rho naught times 1 plus beta times t minus t 0, okay. So, rho 0 is the density at uh, t equal to t naught and everywhere else it is uh, varying linearly. So, we just t keep this the linear dependency. And uh, what does this mean? I need to have beta as positive or negative. Density has to decrease with temperature. So, beta is negative. Because as temperature increases, density has to decrease, okay. So, now, so what I have done therefore is a simplified model. Again, that simplification is called the business approximation. And again, that is the whole uh, motivation for any modeling, any exercise you do is, see the idea is if you were to even solve the full fledged problem, at the end of the day, this critical delta T uh, that you are getting with this business approximation may be let us say 80 uh, degrees Celsius, okay. With all this complication may be 81 degrees Celsius and that you would not be able to do uh, with your computations, you would not be able to get at that value, okay. So, I mean if you as an engineer, for 1 degree you are willing to compromise if you can you know do a simplified model and get some insight. So, that is the motivation, okay. Of course, if somebody is teaching a computational fluid dynamics course, he may possibly argue the other way, huh? that is different. So, uh, what we want to do now is we want to, uh, we have written down the modeling equations. 
we want to find the steady state okay and what is the steady state that you have the steady state you have is going to be one which is um, stationary where the liquid is not moving okay so let me uh, go slide uh, sneak into this corner and men, uh, write this thing as rho 0 multiplied by 1 plus beta times t minus t0 that's my rho that's the only place where i'm keeping my temperature dependency so uh, i told you that we're going to look at this as a stability problem and uh, so in order to find a stability problem we need a steady state to find the stability right and what is the steady state the, the, what is the one possible steady state the one possible steady state is the one where the liquid is not moving the, the u is 0 v is 0 okay so a steady state is the one where the liquid is stationary that means u equals 0 v equals 0 there is no motion right I mean and that you clearly you expect that uh, that is going to be true for uh, low delta t and in fact you will see that that is going to be true for uh, no matter what the delta t is so u equal to 0 v equal to 0 is a steady state for all values of the parameter but then it is stable for low delta t it is unstable for large delta t which is the reason you see the convection okay so when we do this uh, you will understand it better but what i want to do now is find out the corresponding variation in the pressure and the temperature liquid is not moving fine so how do i find the variation in the pressure and temperature go to the momentum equation momentum equation in the x direction tells you dp by dx equals 0 pressure is independent of x this was base state this is my steady state okay so this i should write as my steady state uss vss because and this is the steady state whose stability i am interested in and when this guy becomes the idea is when this guy becomes unstable i have my natural convection just like when i have the u equal to 0 becoming unstable i had the uh, co concentration varying in my reaction diffusion problem in my y direction what's the story in my y direction you just put uss equal to 0 vss equal to 0 you get dp by dy equals minus rho naught g times 1 plus beta times t ss minus t naught okay but i do not know what the steady state profile is for temperature and how do i find that i find that by i never wrote the temperature equation is it oh i need to write the temperature equation so in order to find the temperature profile i need to write the temperature equation which is the energy equation let me come here and here again i have a rho, rho i keep that as rho 0 dy equals k times okay so that's your energy equation in the simplified form Accum accumulation convection conduction and uh, i keep density constant here okay because that's not important and steady state that goes off so there is no convection for that particular thing, so there is no motion and again now it is infinite, uh, infinite in the x direction, okay. So if you have a steady state solution which is infinite in the x direction and there is no variation in the boundary, so you expect that this will also be 0 and you only have d square t by dy square equal to 0, okay. 
And this is zero since infinite in x direction. And so the steady state is going to be given by d square t s s by d y square equals zero. Okay, and you have t s s equals t zero. I mean, you need to use the boundary conditions. Okay, boundary conditions are at y equal to zero, t is t naught. At y equals h, I have t equals th. So you will get uh, a linear profile. You will get a linear profile. Tss is going to be of the form a y plus b, and you can actually calculate what the temperature is going to be. Temperature is going to be linear. So clearly, if you have a solid slab where nothing is moving, your temperature gradient is linear. The only conduction is taking place. And that's the story, uh, situation we have here. We have only conduction taking place, and so I have a linear temperature profile. That's my base steady state. Once I calculate what the steady state is, I will substitute it here, and I can calculate how my pressure is varying in the y direction. Okay, so that's the idea. So what we've done today is just found this steady state. Now clearly, in fact, uh, if I have a little bit more uh, guts, I'll actually solve this problem. And y equal to zero. I need to get uh, T0. So this B must be T0. And at Y is equal to H, I must get uh, TH, right? So Y equal to 0, I get T0. And at Y is equal to H, I get TH. That's my uh, profile. So that's my linear profile for my steady state temperature. Okay, and uh, what I do is I substitute this here, and I can find PSS. DPSS by dy can be found as minus rho naught g times one plus beta times TSS is TSS minus T naught is TH minus T naught times y by h, something like this. Okay, I just substitute the TSS here. The point I'm trying to make here is that no matter what H is, no matter what TH is, what no matter what T0 is, this is always a steady state. Okay, so this steady state where the liquid is not moving is going to be valid always. Okay, but then as we just argued earlier, when the delta T becomes more than a critical value. This is not going to be something which you're going to experimentally observe. You'll, you'll experimentally observe this only when delta t is lower than a critical value. Okay, so this, the fact that the guy starts moving, an actual experiment, means that this guy has become unstable. So we want to find this delta t critical by solving the stability of the steady state. We're going to find out when is this guy uh, becoming unstable. Okay. And uh, just like we got some uh, relationship for diffusion coefficient the other day, we are going to find a relationship to find out when this guy starts moving. And for that, we start with the governing equations, have the steady state, do the linearization, and solve that.